Well, good morning. Good to see each one of you today. Glad you're here in the Raleigh Church. I trust you had a nice Thanksgiving. And uh, we're blessed. Today's sermon is entitled, Being Thankful. And it's, I'm going to kneel and you can stay seated. Loving Father in heaven, we just ask, Lord, that you just teach us about thankfulness, gratefulness, appreciation. Use me as your servant that I'll be learning today, too, as we come to you. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to be using our Bibles today or your device, whatever you want to use. And let's go to Daniel chapter 2, starting in verse 17. Most of us know Daniel well. He's taken into captivity. And then King Nebuchadnezzar has a dream. The big metal image, what's the top? Gold. Silver. What's the third metal? We have brass or bronze. And then we have legs of iron and feet or what? Iron and clay. Nebuchadnezzar wakes up and says, wow, that must be an important dream. He calls all his wise men astrologers, magicians, soothsayers. Hey, I had a dream. Oh, wonderful. Tell us the dream. We'll give you the interpretation. Uh, I can't remember the dream. You are the men with the mystical powers. You tell me the dream, and then I'll know you can tell me the interpretation. And they couldn't do it. And they said, King, you're off asking a hard thing. No other king has ever asked such a thing. Kill them all. You don't mess with the kings, do you? So they went to get Daniel, and Daniel said, why the haste? Well, because they couldn't answer the king's dream. He said, I need some time. So he went in, and he asked for time. King, give me some time. We pick the story up in verse 17. Then Daniel went to his house and made the decision known to Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, his companions, that they might seek mercies from the God of heaven concerning the secret so that Daniel and his companions might not perish with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. And then in verse 19, then the secret was revealed to Daniel in a night vision. So Daniel blessed the God of heaven. Daniel answered and said, blessed be the name of God forever and ever, for wisdom and might are his. He changes the times and the seasons. He removes kings and raises up kings. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to those who have understanding. He reveals deep and secret things. He knows what is in the darkness, and light dwells with him. I thank you and praise you, O God of my fathers. You have given me wisdom and might. You have made made known to me what we asked of you, for you have made known to us the king's demand. You think he was thankful? Oh, he was thankful. He knew what was coming. A little while later, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, where did they end up defying the king? They ended up in a fiery furnace. So Daniel knew the king was serious, that all of them were going to die. So he was thankful. He was grateful that God gave him that decree. And God answers prayer. Bring your prayer request to God and let him work. There's a girl, Christy, that I knew in a previous district, and she had some dental work done, and her insurance company said, we're not covering that. It was a lot of money. And she was just, look at I have kids. I don't have any money. I thought my dental insurance was going to cover it. They're not going to cover it. I owe the dentist all this money. So we prayed. And then she came back. Still no. We prayed again. She came back, and she said, you know what? The insurance company is going to pay for it. Wow. From a no to a yes, prayer. Somewhere, somebody in that insurance company had mercy on Christy, and they paid that bill. Bring your wants and needs to God. And then when he f- fulfills them, sometimes it's a little lingering time. What do we do? We thank him. We show appreciation. Many successful people have mentioned that when they came to an impasse in their work, 
and were baffled that they sought wisdom from the Lord. Samuel F.B. Morse, the inventor of the telegraph, was in this group. George Hervey inquired, Professor Morse, when you were making your experiments at the university, did you ever come to a standstill, not knowing what to do next? He said, you know what, I've never told anybody about this. You're the first one, yes, many times. I came at an impasse, I just didn't know how to make this work. Well, what did you do? I prayed for more light. And what happened? God gave me that light. He opened the secrets to me. And that's why I don't feel worthy of the accolades I'm getting from America and Europe over my invention. Because God gave me that. He says, I'm just grateful he chose to reveal it to me. Now in view of this fact, it's not surprising that the inventor's first message over the telegraph was, that's a trivia question. What hath God wrought? Who got the glory? God did. And he was thankful. So every time you face a perplexing problem, be like Daniel. Seek for wisdom from above. And when the answer comes, always be sure to thank God. Thank you, God. And give him the glory. Thanking God should not be a rare occasion or a rare event. Well, here's an example again from Daniel's life. Let's go to Daniel chapter 6. Daniel chapter 6. Daniel was, the, Daniel was now in the Media Persian Empire. He was a first president of the three, and there were men under them, and they didn't like that Daniel was above them. Why didn't they like Daniel was above them? Who's keeping track of the books? Who's watching the accounts? It fell on Daniel. So the men under him, it meant something to be an official. What's this mean? Payola, money, siphon it off. And they knew they couldn't do that with Daniel. So what they want to do, they wanted to give him the boot and they couldn't find anything he did wrong. And you talk about um, someone going after you. These men searched everything to get Daniel and they couldn't catch him. No skeletons in his closets. No money missing. So they said, we got to get him over the law of his God. So they went to the king. Oh, king, we're all here. We want to make a decree that no one prays to you for 30 days, but no one prays to you except for, no one prays except to you for 30 days. Sorry about that. And so what did the king do? He made the decree. And the next, and Daniel heard there was a decree. And we're going to pick it up here in, in verse 4. Sorry. Let's go down here to, I want to read a verse 8 and down of Daniel 6. Now, O king, establish the decree and sign it in the writing so that it cannot be changed according to the law of the Medes and Persians, which does not alter. Therefore, King Darius signed the written decree. Now, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went home in his upper room with his windows open toward Jerusalem. He knelt down on his knees three times that day and prayed and gave thanks before his God, as was his custom since early days. Since early days. So what did Daniel do in the light of a death decree hanging over him? He prayed. And what else did he do? He thanked God. I can just imagine, Lord, I'm thanking you in advance because I know you're going to work something out for me. Pray in advance. Lord, I don't know what's going to happen. The law is inflexible. It's been signed. It's been sealed. There's no way out. And God did deliver him, didn't he? When King Darius came the next morning, oh, oh Daniel, are you okay? I've done no harm to you, king. God sent his angel and what? Shut the lion's mouth. Praise God. So Daniel, Daniel thanked God. God, and probably when he was praying up in his room, praising God for life, for salvation, for his position, for his guidance, for his protection, 
for an opportunity to bear God's name before this empire. If he, was ma- if he had a wife, I don't believe he was married, but if he did, he prayed for his wife and his children. Praying, praying. So, Lord, I'm thanking you. I'm thanking you for what you're going to do for me. That's called trust. That's called appreciation. And we as God's people need to be praying too. It says that we are a royal priesthood and a holy what? Generation or nation. That's right. So we are priests. In the Old Testament, let's go to 1 Chronicles chapter 23. 1 Chronicles chapter 23. And I want to read from 27 through 30. Are we there? Here's what the writer of Chronicles says. For by the last, sorry, what did I say? Um, 27, 23, I'm there. For by the last words of David, the Levites were numbered from 20 years old and above because their duty was to help the sons of Aaron in the service of the house of the Lord in the courts and in the chambers, in the purifying of all holy things, in the work of the service of the house of God, both with the showbread and the fine flour, the grain offering with the unleavened cakes, and what is baked in pan, and what is mixed with the kinds of uh, measures and sizes. Here it is, verse 30. So they're doing all these things to help the priests. Now, do we have a high priest in heaven? Are we working for him in different ways as his missionaries, right, as the sons and daughters on this planet? But I think we can learn from verse 30. These men, to stand every morning to thank and praise the Lord, and likewise at what? Evening. So what were they doing? Standing, praising and thanking God. That's where evening and morning worship comes in. Time to read God's word. Time to praise and thank him. Lord, thank you for another day of life. Thank you for getting me through here. Thank you that you help us pay our bills. Thank you for my job. Thank you for the home I'm in. Thank you for the the Bible, for the great salvation you provide so rich, free, and abundantly. Thank you for my wife and children. Thanking him for what he has done for us. Gratitude is what always spoils life when it is left out. A thankful spirit enables one to praise God even when circumstances are difficult. The preacher, Alexander White, he always began his prayers. When he was up, morning prayer with his group in the church, Lord, and he always started with a a thank. Lord, I thank you. Some sort of uh, expression of gratitude. One miserable, cold, rainy day, everybody's in there, cold, and they wonder, okay, what's he going to pray today? He kneels down, he says, Lord, I'm thankful. It's not always like this every day. <laughs> right? He got some warmth out of that. Lord, this is, a, this is just a rare occasion. Ellen White, Ministry of Healing, page 492. Cultivate the habit of speaking well of others. Dwell upon the good qualities of those with whom you associate and see as little as possible of their errors and failings. When tempted to complain of what someone has said or done, pray something in that person's life or character. Cultivate thankfulness. Praise God for his wonderful love and giving Christ to die for us. It never pays to think of our grievances. God calls upon us to think of his mercy and his matchless love that we may be inspired with praise. And it's called looking on the bright side. Right? Looking on the bright side. Looking at the positives. That doesn't mean we negate the negatives, but it helps keep things in what? Perspective. Keep things in perspective. Look on the bright side. Unless I were doing uh, depression seminars, we got trained from Neil Nedley, and they had a thing that, I think it was 10 days, no complaining. Anybody in the program. And if you mess up, you start over. So if you're on day four and you complain, start over. There was a lot of starting over. <laughs> there was a lot of starting over. Because it just becomes normal to be negative. But it just alerted us that 
no, these thoughts that are up there are not, not healthy. They don't do us any good. And uh, all they do is wear us out, tie us up, and take our sap, our strength, our joy. So look on the bright side. Maybe have a fast in your house. Don't do 10 days. Try three days to begin. A fast of criticism in your home. No complaining about the food, the weather. Zero, zip, not a nothing. And uh, I think it'll be a challenge to see that, you know what, maybe the, a, a change needs to happen. Let's take a look at Luke chapter 17. This is a really a, a great story about thankfulness in Luke chapter 17, starting in verse 11. This is the cleansing of the ten lepers. Okay, Luke chapter 17, starting in verse 11. Now it happened as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. Then, as he entered a certain village, there met him ten men who were lepers who stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. So when he saw them, he said to them, Go, show yourselves to the priest. And so it was, as they went, they were cleansed. They were cleansed. Now one of them, when he saw that he was healed, returned, and with a loud voice glorified God. He fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan, non-Hebrew, the enemy. He was a Samaritan. Verse 17, so Jesus answered and said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? Were they not any found who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, Arise, go your way, your faith has made you well thankfulness. Nine ran away, one came back. Lord, thank you for what you've done for me. Thank you. This is a story to teach us not to take the things we have for granted, the blessings that we have, and thank God for them. They may be meager, but even meager, still can have a happy home. Amen? Yes. Still can have a happy home. Jesus said to him, Arise, go your way, your faith has made you well. In our faith in God, trust in his power, his love, his care, his guidance. This, uh, he sustains us. Give us this day our daily bread or daily needs, whatever it is. Pray that prayer. Ask God to provide. Ask God to open up doors for you to, uh, to do that and thank him. So let's each of us resolve to do better than just one out of 10. Amen? In Romans chapter 1, verse 21, I'm just going to read this one. Paul writes about those who are unthankful. It says here, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. Neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. So we don't want to be part of that group, do we? We want to be part of the thankful group, the grateful group, the worshipful group, the loyal group, who know that God is working. And yes, bad things happen to good people. This part of living here, part of the great controversy. Bad things happen to good people. But even then, we can put our trust in God and see how he's going to rebuild or fix that situation. What lesson is he teaching us? Why did this happen? It's not always our fault. What is God teaching me? How to be stronger, how to have more patience, how to work through problems, how to be tougher. You know, we're going to have to be tough at the end days, right? So maybe some of these things are to give us a little more, uh, little more backbone to stand and to work through and not give up. Because sometimes you just can't give up. You just got to just keep on going. One year, when Christmas came on a Sabbath, a farmer decided... I'm going to go to church today. 
in the sermon was titled, The Ox Knows His Owner and the Ass His Master's Crib, but Israel does not know, my people does not, do not consider. Isaiah is saying that a man is dumber than the animals. After church, he returned home. He went out to the barnyard, and as he was out in the barnyard, a cow came up and started licking his hand. And then the sermon hit him. I don't give this cow anything but grass and water. And what's he doing? He's licking my hand, and I don't even acknowledge God. He just broke down and cried, realizing God had given him so much. He had taken it for granted, and it broke his heart. So cultivate thankfulness. Have a prayer journal. Write all the things in your prayer journal. Maybe every day write in that prayer journal three things you're thankful for. Maybe have a 20-day or 30-day where every day everybody in the family is going to say three things they're thankful for. for tr- I, I've done this before. And you get into like the 20th day, uh, thank you for the grass, thank you for the clouds. Uh, because there's so much, three a day. But really, if we would stretch ourselves, we would see there are substantial things that we have that we, that we are just uh, overlooking that God is doing for us. In John chapter 11, let's take a look at John chapter 11. This is Jesus at Lazarus' tomb. Starting in verse 41. Jesus shows up, it says, take the stone away. Martha says he's been dead four days. In verse 40, Jesus said to her, did I not say to you that you would, that if you would believe, you would see the glory of God? And now verse 41. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead man was lying. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. Was Lazarus raised yet? No. Jesus was saying thank you on the front end. Wow. Thanking him. Lord, I don't know how you're going to fix this, but I'm thanking you now. I'm trusting you now that you have heard me. In verse 42, and I know that you always hear me, but because of the people who are standing by, I said this, that they may believe that you sent me. And I would say God always hears you too, right? His ears are open to the prayers of his people. Nothing gets by him. Even the cry of your heart that you don't even utter, God can hear that cry. Whatever's going on inside you, maybe you're keeping it silent. Maybe no one else knows but you. God hears that. When the demon-possessed people came, they, oh, we know who you are, Jesus of Nazareth. But Jesus understood, oh, they're speaking, but there's another person in there who has a different longing than what you guys have, and Jesus would heal that person. Jesus knew what was going on in the person's hearts. Charles Dickens. He was an interesting person. This is what he said one time. Charles Dickens said that we are somewhat mixed up here in America. Okay, that got my attention. Okay? That's almost like fighting words. Everybody knows America is, okay, somewhat mixed up here in America. He told an audience that instead of having one Thanksgiving Day each year, we should have 364 and one day for complaining. (laughs) I think maybe there's something to that. Praising and thanking God in the morning and in the evening. Thanking him. Philippians 4, 6 says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. So be anxious for nothing. It's easy to be anxious in these days, worrying about problems. But he's saying, you know what? Don't be anxious. But in everything by prayer, because we're connecting to God, supplication, making our request, and we're making them with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. So let's remember to be grateful and thankful to our Heavenly Father. 
He loves us. He cares for us. An attitude of thankfulness re reveals we appreciate what God is doing for us. Show appreciation. Resolve to never take God for granted, but to praise and thank his holy name and reveal we love him with all our heart, all our soul, all our mind, and all our might.